Welcome to How To EGD. I'm Stefan Klein and I'm in the design studio of Pure Design Architects in Jeffrey's Bay, South Africa. And with me, I've got Jacobus Scott, the lead architect at this firm. And we are here to have a quick interview with him to hear a bit more about architecture, the role of an architect, and how you can position yourself for absolute success. So what's the requirements to qualify to become an architect? The biggest requirement is, is a portfolio. You need to do that in advance, about a year in advance. Mm -hmm. and, and that tests your creative skills, your drawing skills, mm -hmm. um, how you understand tasks and, and how you understand briefings. You have to get a, a standard level of marks, but they see, if, if you look at something that is creative or something that is interesting, something that is dynamic, it stands out and that immediately for those judges is, is a person that think out of the box. Jakes, what was your biggest surprise starting off your studies in architecture? A lot of people talk about the, the hard work, the lots of hours and the all-nighters, the one after the other of the other, but it, it's among friends, it's among students and fellow students is going through the same thing. So it's a, it's a good vibe, it's, it's a good place. Tell me, Jakes, that um, struggle of realizing, okay, architecture is not the most easy course that you could study. What helped you to persevere and in the end succeed in becoming an architect? From the, from the start of the studies, you understand that you've got a bigger role in society. The, the fact that you're creating space for someone to use and utilize and that can make a difference in their life mm -hmm. and how they use the space. Whether it's, whether it's a shack, whether it's a house, whether it's a tall building, they, they all have inhabitants using the space. Mm -hmm. And when you understand you can improve someone's lifestyle, mm -hmm. that creates, that gives you a different ball game. That's powerful. So you're saying the role of an architect is to improve someone's lifestyle by actually creating a space and environment wherein they can live and be and do their work, right? That's correct. So if you understand how someone uses the space mm. and, and how weather works, how mm. patterns work, all mm. of that, mm. then you can start putting those aspects together mm. and actually create a space mm. that allows someone to actually flourish in. Yeah. And whether it's in education, you know, whether it's light, whether it's hospital, all those things mm. require a certain amount of, yeah. of decision making and yeah. things that the, the environment play a role in that space. So I hear you say two things. The first one is to really understand the brief and the task. What is the requirement of your client to consider that? And a great architect does that. He's able to really gain understanding of what is it that the client wants. And then secondly, to design that space to actually fulfill that need in a creative way. So well put. Mm. Thank you. That's why I'm the out teacher. All right. <laughs> It's one thing to qualify as an architect, what's next? How do you actually position yourself in the market to influence and impact and to change environments for people? To position yourself in that space is difficult, especially because we're in a, in a small beach town. Mm. You know, it's not a, you know, from one day you go to the next level, it's, mm. it's you know, it's long term, one have to think of that. Mm. And you need to build up experience in different fields to be able to come to that point where you are adequately, yeah. you know, professional enough to do that and yeah. experienced enough to do that. Just coming out of university, having the qualification, that first step, it wasn't the skyscraper, right? You started off with basically any job that you could get just to inf infiltrate the market. Is that what your strategy was? And was that difficult for you to face? Because you want to be an architect, you want to be designing big things. How, how did you prepare your heart to also do the small things? When you start your own practice, it mm. is literally, um, you know, you, taking what you can get and, and try to get experience and, and, and learning um, elements from each project. Mm. Uh, whether it's a garage or a swimming pool mm. or a boundary wall, those, we take that on and do our best mm. in it. And I think that's, that's part of the characteristic of an architect mm. is just trying to to push the envelope continuously yes. Yes. to see whether there's different avenues and more exciting, yes. adventurous yeah. elements to you know the build environment. Yeah. I hear you say, Jakes, that yes, you can have dreams of big influential designs that a lot of people will use, but you must also be willing to focus on the smaller things and willing to do those smaller things that enables you to get the bigger job. So really be able to start off, be willing to start off humbly and say, listen, I'll start with whatever I can design 
and then out of that grow your business. Um, what's important for learners watching in character to become a successful architect? I think a, a big um, component or a big characteristic is, is just perseverance. Mm -hmm. Just you know, keep keep fighting at it, um, mm -hmm. step by step. Mm -hmm. It is a it's it's a long journey. Um, most fam famous architects that I know only reach you know fame at about six age of sixty, mm -hmm. and then there's an Oscar Niemeyer. He still designed at 106 years old. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you you're looking you you're building a career. I hear him saying, do not give up. Yeah. Perseverance, right? Be faithful in the little things. We've got learners I know that's asked, what software do they start on wanting to pursue a career in drafting or architecture? What's your take on important uh, software that they can get skilled in? I'll go a step back. Use this guy. <laughs> or even this is better. <laughs> that's, how we, that's how we started in our architecture school. For the first three years, we were not allowed to touch the computer. Okay. It was only designing by and sketching and, and conceptualizing by pencil or by pen. And it just learns you, it teaches you to think. You know, when you, when you draw, when you sketch, you're thinking. Where the computer is, is very rigid in its creativity mm -hmm. mode. So that's why I'm just, I'm just taking a step back. A sketch, doodle, whatever you do. And, and that actually also de develops a concept. Yeah. And then, then when you're ready, you take that over into software. Okay. And, and project, uh, a software like, like CAD, AutoCAD, um, a Revit, we use Revit in the office quite a lot, Autodesk, Revit, um, a Photoshop, Coral Draw, okay. you know, that's all elements that, that will help you in your yeah. you know, final projects. So, but pencil, don't forget this, this is important. <laughs> that's interesting that you say for the first three years, you're just using this, even at university. So mm. make sure you draw a lot. I would say draw with confidence, yeah. and you're only going to get that mm. by drawing, drawing, yes. drawing. Thank you so much for your time. I do appreciate you. Thank you. I do as well. All the best with your future. Great. Come on, let's go in another place. Let's go. Let's go here, sir.